Okay, so welcome to our week three. Week three lesson class, okay, for digital visualizations over here. Okay, so normally, okay, in our session for lesson class, okay, one of the reason I don't want to give you guys a lot of notes, okay, a lot of basically, right, okay, um, some writing, or what we call that, visuals there, okay, because I want you guys to enjoy basically to do your research in the future, there, okay, by um, exploring basically some information that we can get also from uh, the social media or internet or YouTube, there, okay, because these days. Most of our most our discipline and also our routine, okay, and our what we call that ethic of work, there, okay. We're going to spend most of our time basically on screen. So that means, okay, there's a lot of uh, valuable can also add additional kind of informations visually that we 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 actually can actually right gather, okay, when we want to develop our skill or design senses and skill at the same time. There. Even though you, I know basically you guys knowing more better than me, right? Okay? Some of you guys who actually can explore more further on the social media, there, right? But hopefully, okay, have you guys seen these videos there before? <coughs> Anyone have seen this on a video here? Color theories of digital artists and beginners there. We want to refresh back again, okay? With what basically we actually have been experienced there before, okay? But the point is right now. When I saw basically some of you guys been working on with those illustrations there, right? Okay, with, with those kind of character design that we did basically for our exercise there, the warm up exercise there, right? I can see basically some of you guys again. Okay, I've noticed some of you guys still struggling enough to develop that kind of color combinations there. Okay, hopefully these two videos that we have can give you guys a bit more kind of refreshing kind of understanding back again. But of course. Okay, in order basically we want to exploring basically our combination of colors there, okay? You guys have to understand uh, to develop these two different kinds. For me, okay, my kind of tips there basically, okay? I will basically work with warm and cool colors there, okay? Let me share basically with you guys some of those, <coughs> uh, what we call that code over here. Warm and cool colors there. All right. All right. If you check look basically on this, on this uh, color wheel or color combinations or color kind of coats over here, there, right, guys. Okay. If you guys check look closely here. This is basically the basic fundamental kind of code color that I I basically use okay to develop into my works okay basically this is what what I've done okay but in order to basically you have your own color combinations I believe you have to experiment with you have the knowledge basically you have the experience basically there before but you need to test during the process of developing your design or your characters you have to test all these kind of color combinations okay whatever that you're going to use photoshop ai or any right okay, application like procreate for example you need to be brave okay to develop that kind of explorations on using basically the color combinations there okay this is basically those uh, the standard kind of base colors there, okay. The primary colors, secondary, tertiary colors there, okay. Which is you guys can actually divide warm and cool together, okay. What do we mean by warm and cool there, okay? My kind of definitions, all right. If you want to design basically the characters and some of the layout or combination of the background there, okay. I will share basically some of those illustrations, which is my illustrations there. We, uh, we have to study this kind of uh, elements, there, guys. This kind of matters, there, guys. Otherwise, okay, you won't be able to see those difference over here. <coughs> okay, I will share basically some of the works of mine there, okay. 
for example there guys okay if you check look over here you guys still here there right not sleeping there right okay now okay let's take a look there guys okay some of the combination of colors there is some of my you know basically right okay, when you come to develop that kind of illustration or, or combination of of composition of elements there okay combination of elements and arrangement of those elements together and the characters itself that can be developed into those flows the reading flows there okay how basically we're going to capture and direct basically our audience there to the flows flows of reading basically our design okay our visual kind of what we call the interpretations there okay color combinations are really important there right you have to know how to create depth of fields that based on colors only depth of fields right okay you guys learned photography there before is it put yes or no right okay have you done any kind of photographics kind of assignments there before using basically cameras shoot some of the locations shoot some of the object there right okay or any kind of compositions there yeah right okay great so that means that right you guys still learn about depth of fields depth of fields okay combination between the distance there how to show basically the contrast between the object also the landscape the background there okay to emphasize more on those elements that you're going to portray on those on those photos there okay same goes in illustrations there guys they will be having the same kind of discipline there okay otherwise <coughs> The whole thing are not going to be stand out there okay they are not going to be focused okay there is no focal point in your design there, okay for example there okay when you take a look okay, we to take a look at the finished products there right okay the finished products okay i have one of it right here okay i have one of it right here okay if you guys can see on my cameras there okay how basically right okay? basically this design okay these illustrations that i created right uh, I've been creating this kind of design for one of the demonstrations for uh, for my students okay a few years back okay, many years back I came around 2013 as so second step. So if you check look at this combination of those elements there, even though there's a lot of multiple elements there which is in my design there, right okay? you guys even though I can sometimes I'm using basically right some warm colors also to combine to combine with the with the with the main elements in my design but still you guys can actually see basically right, you guys can actually can see the flows of my design they can will be they can be read there right, okay? they can be reading directly right, okay? those designs by uh, by looking at the main kind of elements that is okay most of it there right okay most of it guys you guys can see okay even though these red colors are uh, what we call that is pillows there right okay this design itself i'm using basically a warm colors background there right, okay to give more contrast okay more highlights there right, okay and more kind of what we call the engagements on the eye itself to the audience there okay so that's why when we actually going to use all this kind of combination of colors warm and go colors especially there's a book that actually i, I have read before but I, one day maybe I'm going to share with you guys not the books, basically one of the earliest kind of uh, paintings, all pastel painting that which is I actually have been done, that based on this warm and cool colors there. But it's a landscape painting, there guys. I don't have right here right now anymore, right? Okay? I don't know where I have. I'm I'm still actually having those digital format, right? Okay? But it's basically a traditional uh, oil pastel kind of painting there, landscapes. I've actually right when I actually have have basically learned and experienced the color theory studies there. It's just like you guys there, okay? Same as you guys okay before. Then I begin to experiment and exploring basically those color combinations when I actually did my paintings there. So I'm starting exploring this warm and cool colors there, okay? Sometimes when people say okay, oh uh, an object basically need to have a very monotonous kind of colors there okay, it has to be a bit more nowadays people will use blur effects there right okay, sometimes right, okay, for their illustrations there right okay uh, sometimes they're going to use very 
<coughs> a very basically there are very subtle soft simple kind of plain kind of visual kind of combinations of brushes there right okay, to show some sort of like a blending kind of mode here right sometimes okay if you take a look at my design i'm not actually blending some of those elements there but i try to make it contrast i'll make it strong elements from front there okay and make it those illust those elements look more stand out than the rest of those elements there but still can read the flows of it you're not your eyes not going to be distracted with a lot of colors there you guys can see basically sometimes when people just throw and, and apply okay we can see some of the poses in our in our studios on our in our lab there, right uh, when when we actually saw some of the design elements that doesn't look right the color combinations then everything has to stand out there okay there is no uh, uh there is no kind of feel of natural basically or we don't we doesn't have any kind of what we call that our eyes doesn't have any rest positions there we cannot take a rest kind of what we call that uh, impression of feelings there okay when we saw those kind of because there's a lot of things that that happens in one single composition there. everything wants to stand out there okay? I want to want to reach out for you there okay? as an audience there so you can feel that kind of uh, what we call that um, flawless or maybe some sort of mistakes that, that some of those designers have done there, okay? or students have done there, okay? that make those kind of work doesn't look interesting there. so those kind of things we call the elements and the principle that we that, that he used they they kind of mixed up without understand which basically uh, those kind of what we call the element that they want to give as a main kind of what we call that elements to drive to tell the stories uh, to, to to engage with the audience itself okay if you check a look at these pillows over here these blue colors like the left side right here on top the right thing these characters itself when i actually design these characters here basically it's for my sketchbook my small sketchbooks there okay when i was in the meetings i just sketch it out these ideas there and few years after that i think basically there okay, when i look at some of some of my colleagues some of my friends okay illustrators outside there who actually have been doing almost the same elements there okay which is I've done that before I think suddenly basically this thing sometimes happens like that actually because some people we get influenced with someone else and maybe someone else also have the same ideas there I think so the elements the composition that they use is almost the same what I think in my mind I think so I, I thought basically I, I will give a try working with Photoshop back again and I'm going to paint this one as as uh, what we call that I want to make it a bit more sketchy okay I don't want to make uh, I don't want to make this kind of paintings a bit more like clean too much writing okay? using AI uh, but I want to have a bit more like a paint kind of style there, okay? and have a brush kind of strokes at the same time and the gift a bit more like a very sketchy and unfinished kind of look and feel for this design there, right so I want to remain that kind of doodle kind of what we call that combination kind of styles here, okay with these illustrations there so I start to redraw back again from the initial sketches but I will basically improvise some of the element itself according to those <coughs> those canvas or those composition that I had basically in those computers there, okay? because a lot of things happens not normally in the process of developing those ideas there okay we can saw basically some of you guys when you guys start to sketch out your ideas and transfer into AI or any kind of applications there right sometimes you guys just follow exactly what you actually have been sketched roughly there right my kind of what we call it sites we have we can actually implement two things either we actually can trace exactly but the best way for you guys to develop your ideas there you're going to improvise them okay try to improvise do a little bit more modifications if you can do more modification from your initial ideas to give more impact on your presentations it will be more better for your presentation there guys, and for your kind of output there guys. okay and of course okay you will train your your head your mind there okay 
uh, to develop all these kind of ideas during the process of coloring or completing basically your finalizing your design always have this kind of thought you guys don't be too naive oh i just want to follow exactly what i plan only writing but i don't want to change or i uh, lady to change their for example they know the guys okay because design process to has to be has to be evolved okay has to be evolved okay from from the first ideas okay into when you finalize them they always have a major changes that you can do from there okay and of course that kind of particular kind of attitude or disciplines will carry you into different kind of positions normally people who actually have learned okay who actually been working on for themselves for example there okay you just always thought basically oh this is design is great okay i don't have to consult to anyone okay remember okay, you still have to consult with a lot of your lecturers there right before so they are going to give a bit kind of information you have to change your here and there there okay if you have that kind of mentality, like okay, that kind of understanding there again, you can actually write create back again, you can critique back again your works there. It will give you a next level kind of understanding which is that you can basically become a director in the future there. You can actually conduct people there, right? Okay? Give more ideas there. You're not afraid to express basically your ideas there and show basically your creative side to make a very good impact on those kind of visuals already. Even though you are going to work with someone else there later on. You must have this kind of, uh, what we call that, a very sensitive kind of uh, changes that you can make from every single work that you've done already. That's basically one of those discipline, ethics, work ethic that you have you have to set in your mind as a designer there. but not all the time that we have to give some opinion or suggestions there guys okay so you have to know also when basically to give the suggestions there okay if people may basically ask you your opinions you should give those opinions there but opinions doesn't mean that you have to fight for your opinions all the time there okay but we can give some sort of like practical opinion not basically on what you like but based from the production process that you understand hmm? especially on the technical side okay sometimes some of the works that we've done is not practical or the ideas that we actually throw throw from those designs it's not quite practical enough to make those changes there because of the production side there right okay the practicality of those production side sometimes the print versions there are okay the output versions are not going to be practical there or maybe the design is too it's not meant to be too commercial itself there right so it's hard basically to produce the technical side the cost okay? all those kind of things has to be uh, we need to be aware at the same time there right okay? especially on the production side on the printing side there okay? on screen side normally different kind of way okay uh, when it comes to design the characters this type of characters basically is not suitable for animations there, commercial animations there, right? Okay? Uh, you have to understand, okay, because there's a lot of elements, there's a lot of responsible, okay, but if you guys have a very, uh, you, you work with a very big kind of what we call a team productions team there, right? Okay? You have more than 10 people that can involve in animations there for the same projects. Yes, you guys can use these animation, these characters as a part of those concept for animations, the storyline. Okay, they're going to be a bit more conceptual kind of experimental kind of animations styles. That it doesn't basically have the same kind of commercial uh, generator. Okay, that we actually can use like like most of those uh, animated. Okay, but even though anime nowadays also there's a lot of conceptualized kind of ideas there. Okay. So those are the things that guys okay, that we actually can they, they use also some experimental kind of elements there for those animations because because they know basically okay all these experimental kind of elements okay of those characters if they actually explore more further they become more unique and more distinctive of those ideas that we will can give more great kind of what we call that excitement and engaging the, the audience itself directly in a unique way but we have to do more work from there. Lah. 
so we have to sacrifice basically our chimes okay and our deadline at the same time and our manpowers there to proceed with those ideas there so but yes as a, as a directors as an animation directors as a creative directors or project owners later on project manager you have to be sure that you be brave enough basically to make those changes there for me my advice okay as a students right now you need you must be able to have that kind of mental peace there guys okay make sure you guys be brave enough to challenge yourself there that's why using the color combination basically is really really important there to work on that okay even though you guys can see some other elements like this one i'm using very monotonous kind of colors there but different kind of characters different different kind of styles i think if you check look there right now right even though i'm using a very dark gloomy kind of looks and feel for this forest kind of uh what we call that an environment or ambience there right? okay can you see basically what are the elements what are the color combination that, that i try to focus on the character so even though it's very gloomy that kind of scene there right we can see the depth of fields there right? okay between the light that will been been uh, been uh fall off from the background itself that basically can give a contrast for the foreground itself okay we have three different kind of uh, compositions on this particular kind of layout there right, okay? which is we have a foreground which is this one right, okay the snake itself and also the bird itself over here right, okay on top of it and i give and i give the audio basically uh just like a frame of window there right, okay that people can see basically three four different kind of situations in one particular kind of layout there right okay or panels itself there right okay? or pages itself there right okay? you guys can see basically the, the emotions itself you can see where basically you want to read face these ideas there okay if i'm basically right when basically you saw this particular kind of compositions you will see the overall look of these illustrations there right am i right or not then you're going to follow through with the bird the first panels there which is the first this, this guy basically the character basically close the eyes open up and he start to basically wake up from his dream for example there right and you will read over to this part there right okay to this guy there. okay the same guy the same characters there and you can see the overall looks and feel of those visual kind of storytelling that i try to portray on this first panel there am i right or not yes or no they're right or maybe you have another opinions there hmm you yeah, guys understand what i mean there right now you guys you can see basically those those kind of what we call that storytelling on the visual itself at the same time basically the right the color combination that i use there is basically different than those first visual that i use okay those characters monsters they're right so a bit more bright kind of colors there but if you check look again okay this is basically some sort of scenes that i actually this is basically a final scene for this uh for this comic here okay which is i want to portray basically these characters were basically just wake up from his dream there right okay? but uh, he basically has a, uh, a certain kind of what we call that uh, conflicts with his mind at the same time there, okay when i read basically this story is not from me there right, okay but if you check there okay how basically i combine with some of those different kind of color combinations like purples there are okay rush to itself just to show a complexities of his mind when he wake up from his dream there are okay so i'm not actually using a lot of a uh, very complicated kind of background okay for example if i want to portray basically he actually in those in his uh in his uh castle of those uh bedroom there right okay, for example there right okay but i not i'm going to draw all those kind of ridiculous kind of elements of white background okay just to show basically 
those emotions of these characters there. But I will using basically all this paint kind of style combination with mix some of the colors there. And I'm using basically digital kind of medias from, from this, what we call that process directly. So I will show basically all this kind of massing up kind of emotions by using the combination of colors there. But the colors that I use basically is not purely black and dark there, right? I'm using purple to combine to make a contrast between the characters itself, almost using a very natural colors there. And I mixed up with the red blood colors there because I want to show the death, the, 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 the what we call that the tragic that happens from these characters itself there, right? So all these kind of combinations will not came easily there guys if you not actually try if you not actually train yourself to experiment and exploring and research a little bit about the ideas that you're going to develop in the future there. And if you check look closely there, right? My combination of mixtures directing with this kind of what we call the illustrations drawings are combining the look and feel of charcoal drawing okay especially for this element here and some of the a little bit like a watercolor kind of recorded effects there okay, on the brush itself there right okay so if you take a look a lot of complex okay this is also one of the tricks that I actually use guys okay that I actually use to, to combine basically the elements and to escape from make a lot of details for my illustrations especially for this kind of stories there. I know basically to draw a forest to design a forest is very very complicated there guys what I did there basically there right I tried to do a little bit more research on some of those comics which is I actually have have bought before and actually have been followed before right? like Dave McKean kind of comics there guys so what I did basically, right, I tried to capture some of the elements from the comics. How actually the person basically, right, this uh, Dave McKean, basically one of the great illustrators that I actually respect with, right, right, who actually can mix up with the characters and the forest background, but he basically doesn't have to draw the whole things in details there, but still can see the ambience, the feel, the look and feels. And you can you actually can experience the composition that I use just like when you watch a movie there guys all right you can watch a movie there the compositions the positions there right okay your arrangements just like you shoot a photo there and then you actually combine basically those uh, the angles of those cameras there again okay? Just like you shoot a movies or photos there, okay, or, or movies or some animations maybe there, okay? just like you watch some of those scenes from the movies there. So this is basically the things that I I'm 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 trying to exploring there, okay? explore basically when I actually did these projects, okay. And of course these projects, okay, when I actually did this project, okay, I spent two weeks a lot in my studios there, right? But back to back, doing some of those routine, okay, family kind of things there. But I will spend two weeks basically to preparing all those kind of visuals there that I want from sketches into this finished kind of designer. Okay? But everything that I've done is basically in digital, in digital device, okay. So I will share basically one of those, <coughs> okay. One of the scene, if I'm not mistaken, there, Dave McKean, uh, Black Orchid, there, right? Okay, this is one of the comics, which is I use as a part of my reference when I design this. There's a lot of questions there, guys. Okay, this is the one there. Okay, check look there, guys. Okay, one of the compositions of his. If you may look at, okay, at these compositions, like Orchid, okay, but this guy, this illustrator, there, okay, Dave McKean, he basically using traditional methods, there, guys, okay. See how actually he composed the compositions over here, okay. The lighting effects, he using basically traditional methods, no? okay. He draw using traditional way, there, okay, charcoal or uh, watercolors there. Right, okay, color pencil with a bit there, okay, Conte charcoal there, okay, they mixed up with a lot of traditional medias there. 
So this is basically my reference that I actually use when I actually create my kind of illustrations of it. Okay, this kind of uh, project there right, that I did there. Right. You guys can see the combination between this warm, cool colors at the same time. Right, okay? the fire is warm colors there. The background itself are going to be the very soft tone, kind of pastel, kind of green colors there. Right, but still, you guys can see the combinations, the contrast. Even though I'm using very, very rough, rough kind of what we call that. Uh, drawings over here because it's a part of those styles that I'm going to exploring on these compositions there and of course the the cover page there right okay, that I use okay, even though I'm using okay these black colors basically for the title itself okay but I want to emphasize basically on the on the whole compositions of these characters there even though the character that I created right okay, I did not actually paint the whole things okay but I try to mix up with the sketch kind of style that okay, uh, to give a bit more different kind of looks, to be more raw and rough kind of looks and feel for this particular kind of uh, what we call that title that okay, or, or cover page there, right? Okay? Because this basically these stories were based on dreams. Normally, when it comes to dreams, kind of what we call that uh, visual there, okay, we kind of have a very blurring. Uh, not very clear kind of what we call that visions there that we have okay in our dreams there right okay? so that's why I'm using this kind of way of exploring basically those visuals for the cover itself because it will give basically that kind of emotion and feelings okay that are part basically at this time right this stage there right so that's why <coughs> when we basically using all these kind of elements of design together with our compositions right with our works there okay we basically going back into the fundamental foundations basics kind of interpretations of our developments there back again normally or we always always fascinate with all these modern kind of elements there sometimes some of the features there right, okay but we forget basically okay sometimes okay some of those concepts or criteria of those visuals need to go back into those traditional kind of way there. For me, I love basically to combine all these two elements together, digital and traditional at the same time. Right? So depending basically on the situations, on the purpose of and the right directions, the art directions basically for the project itself. Right? You guys can see all this kind of combination of colors that we talk about. Okay. So guys, any questions there so far? about my kind of interpretation on this design there, right? Any questions? Okay, if you may look there, okay, with some of the elements of compositions there, right, okay, that I use over here, even though the the distance of these houses there, right, okay, from far there, right, okay, I will give a little bit more contrast and also the feeling of flows there, okay? by reading the composition itself the cat basically is a foreground it's not a main characters but this woman that this lady is basically is a this small lady basically is a main character there if you check look closely there right the shadows that i use okay to mixture basically with my kind of illustrations i'm using purple there instead of black instead of brown or yellowish dark orange kind of colors there how I can mix up all those kind of elements together, learn to analyze them guys and experiment with it at the same time. Alright, even though I'm using basically this very simple kind of characters, shape kind of styles there. But still, you can see all this combination of color that I use, they has a certain kind of distance. There's a certain kind of distance that we actually can can saw from my kind of arrangements there, right? Okay? Even though this is not a pure, uh, what we call that red color there, I'm using uh, a little bit more like uh, purplish, what we call that kind of colors there, right? Okay? Of these flowers itself, even though uh, the what we call that hibiscusy, hibiscus, right? Bunga uh, raya there, right? Were basically is in the red colors there normally there right okay pure red kind of colors there 
very strong colors but i'm using different kind of color because in realities we also can see this kind of combination of colors okay natural color from the from the flowers itself so when basically we choose all this kind of color there okay we need to have also the reality checks on the natural kind of colors which is can be manipulate back again in our compositions that's why whatever that we do we want to create a kind of sensitivities awareness and of course okay your kind of design senses that we combine all these kind of elements together okay. we are not robot that guys when it comes to develop those illustrations or design just pick some of the colors from the color kind of what we call that swatches there right and put into our design right they add into our design there i always basically going to be work with the sliders itself okay. even though when i using basically this kind of color combinations okay this is basically uh, uh, Morocco made of flash but what we're going to do later on using the animate there right a bit kind of advanced and different than this one but the concept of using those kind of combination of uh, what we call that tools are almost the same there right okay almost the same there guys so when I'm actually right okay this is the color pickers there okay when we using basically a uh, normally right okay uh, flash or adult animate nowadays basically they has a color pickers like this or maybe a color mixer like this okay i would rather basically change okay my sliders over here okay my sliders over here okay to pick my kind of choice of colors there okay my choice of colors there okay i will pick the choice of colors okay that are going to be have a contrast kind of looks there if you should look at this this color this combination between these two characters there right we can see basically these two colors that are used they has a different kind of combination of emotions emotions the color because give emotion to the design itself there, okay? so when you design the characters there before okay for these two weeks of our sessions there right you must be able to have this what we call that this kind of and ideas when you develop this design okay the colors that you're going to choose are going to reflect basically the emotion of your characters that guys okay when you talk about okay how actually i design the characters there okay when i actually told you guys okay pick one design and try to develop improvise into multiple kind of ideas there based on the same subject matter there, guys you don't have to go through with five different design okay five different kind of sketch okay even though you you need to develop few number kind of ideas first <clears throat> but after that you have to choose one of it after you choose one of those design then you actually can apply back again and improvise and you guys to can create some of the emotion expression if you want to based on that design there right so basically that's not the thing this is what we can actually apply but this one a bit different because I'm creating this one for my animations there as you guys have seen maybe this one before right so when I create those animations characters I need to have different kind of emotions to test the characters kind of uh, what we call that styles there that we actually that I'm going to use for those animations later on so you guys can see basically the different emotion between two different characters when I use the color to many code right? the color scheme for these both characters both of these characters there so the blue characters the b type kind of characters a bit kind of more cool more relaxed right okay but this guy basically okay like a worm type kind of characters there okay already basically there okay it has a very a very aggressive kind of what we call the emotions there okay emotions there right guys okay Okay, the emotions that is there, okay? You can, you can see basically the aggressiveness of these characters itself. Even though I'm using basically the expressions over here. Without the expressions, even though you see the characters are quite cool a bit there, okay? But you can see those, uh, what we call that. The eyebrows that I use is very thick there, okay? That means 
the characters itself you can see okay I, I don't, I'm not saying basically everyone who actually have a very thick eyebrow are going to be a very aggressive kind of person there right but in visual communications you guys can actually we have we need to interpret the element that we use are going to be affected basically our emotion personalities of our characters there in the pictures okay learn from there all the element that you're going to create that based on your characters or whatever that you're going to do later on there has to be a reason why there has to be some sort of they're going to communicate with the audience itself then people will have that kind of emotions that guys when people have that kind of engagement of emotions from your design that mean you actually have put your standard of your design into a next level so that people get can gain engage with your kind of emotions there and I saw basically some of you guys also have that kind of skills that that can be uh, developed more further on those design writing so we must have that kind of things there okay other than uh, some of you guys that I saw there before uh, you guys were using basically uh, like uh, our friend uh, okay uh, women with a with a big kind of books there right okay that she that he actually loved to draw okay but all those kind of things sometimes they give a very what we call that a very instant kind of what you call that kind of emotions or feeling impressions but they're not going to be last long there right okay those kind of uh, what I say how can I say right okay? uh, that kind of uh, a very explicit kind of what we call the looks directly okay explicit kind of looks directly it's not going to be last long even though some of the Japanese anime manga okay they always use also this element like women with the with the books the huge kind of books and also uh, what we call that uh, but they're right okay or the shapes very very quite very masculine at the same time they have a, a very strong strong sex appealing kind of what it looks like okay? basically they try to engage with the audience there they want to have okay the audience like men or maybe boys there right okay? are going to have that kind of sexual kind of feelings there okay guys remember the right okay? so Japanese anime sometimes uh, what we call that nowadays animation there right they have that kind of different agenda there right okay? all those kind of things I'm not saying that I don't like to watch all those kind of things in the element itself okay but when it comes to be uh, when you we actually become a designer we have must be able to have responsibility okay? if you keen or you purposely want to do those kind of things because you want to engage with your audience go ahead all right it's up to you guys then, okay? because you basically the design is yourself there right huh? So that means we need to have that kind of reason why we use those elements there. If the purpose basically, the direction that you go from there basically are going to be that kind of reasons there, okay? Just go ahead first, right? Okay? But of course, they always, always, people will give, respond to that particular kind of element there. So we have to be get ready on it, okay? So if you willing to get the critics, session based from there yes sir. okay I will share basically these videos and the link itself later on also there okay but I just want to what we call if you guys okay I'm going to share also these videos but we're going to check look what basically this guy are going to be say about the color combination with okay because he's basically is one of the illustrators also BJ there okay he's also using a lot of online kind of sessions okay I think when the pandemic came there okay share a lot of his thought already so we, we, how I, let's basically take a look and enjoy those videos here okay guys around 63 people right here 62 people there already right here any questions so far now you guys can you actually can see basically some of the secrets basically that I use basically for my combination of illustrations there all right enjoy the videos there please
Deluxe version looks so much more appealing. How can the exact same drawing look so bad one way and look so good another way just by making minor changes? Here's the thing, the colors you choose can make or break your design. Understanding color theory and color harmony is the key to making art that looks good. Just so happens, that's the topic of today's video. So if you want to learn how to pick the right colors for your work every time, keep watching. So you've probably heard about color theory or color harmony. You might have even looked up articles or videos about it online. And chances are you either got super bored or super confused about how to actually use anything that you saw. That's why I'm taking a different approach with this video. I'm not going to go into the history of the color wheel or explain the differences between primary and secondary and tertiary colors. To be honest, I'm going to take most of those common terms and explanations and throw them out the window to keep this as easy as possible to understand by showing you real world examples and how I use them. To explain all this, I'll be using the Procreate app on the iPad to kind of help you visualize what the heck I'm talking about. And if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm a huge fan of Procreate, but to be honest, Procreate has some great features that are gonna help you pick and choose the right color. As you watch too, keep in mind, I'm also using RGB color profiles for everything you see in this video. All right, so now that we're in Procreate, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the color panel up here and then down at the bottom I'm gonna hop over to the classic view of the color panel because this is the layout for a lot of other art programs too so if you're a digital artist you can follow along no matter what app or program that you're using and the first slider we're going to talk about is up here at the top this is the hue slider and it picks your color so if you're used to sticking with the disk view here, the hue slider is the same thing as this outer hue ring right here. So moving this ring around here does the exact same thing as the slider right here. Moving down then, we have the saturation slider, which controls the intensity of your color. So as you can see up here, this drags our color selection from left to right. Sliding it to the left is going to desaturate the color, it's going to soften up that hue, and then moving it all the way to the right is going to give us the most saturated version of our color. One thing to remember here is that colors with max saturation are going to be super bold and aggressive, and you're not going to want to use them all the time. Finally, we have the brightness slider down here, which adjusts how light or how dark your color is. So as you can see, sliding this left and right moves that color selector up here from top to bottom. Using those two sliders together, the saturation and the brightness slider, that's going to allow us to fine tune and get the exact color that we want. Color temperature plays a super important role in choosing the right color to start out with. I'm sure you're all well aware there are warm colors and there are cool colors. Generally speaking, reds, oranges, and yellows are warm colors, while blues, greens, and violets are cool. Now, color temperature can be a lot more complicated than this simple illustration, but just a reminder, I'm keeping this video simple so everyone can understand. So the key here to remember is color temperature can affect the mood and the depth of your illustration. Warm colors, they really make us think of things like heat or sunlight, and they're stimulating. While cool colors are more relaxing, they're more calming, and they remind us of water, sky, or grass. Warm colors stand out more, they come to the front of a design, while cool colors tend to recede. This is a great way to give depth to your illustrations by using warm colors in the foreground, and then cool colors for the background. You can create a lot of contrast in your designs by playing warm and cool colors off of each other. Another important thing to think about when picking colors is the symbolism and emotions behind the colors. Certain colors make people think or feel different things, which can be used to your advantage as an artist that's trying to communicate with your audience. Red is associated with fire, love, danger, or violence. Orange can be associated with creativity, autumn, or movement. Yellow is associated with happiness or cheerfulness. Green can represent nature or growth or wealth. Blue is associated with peace, calmness, or even sadness at times. Violet is associated with prestige, imagination, or romance. 
And then we have neutral colors like black and white. Black is often associated with rebellion and power or elegance or death, while white is associated with purity, virtue, and peace. So don't get me wrong, understanding the colors and the qualities is great and all, but that only gets us so far. What we really need to know is how do we use the colors together in our designs? That's the most important thing, and that's where color harmony comes in. The My brother did this and made money. I tried and lost money. My best friend. First color harmony we're gonna cover is monochromatic. So monochromatic color schemes are made up of different tints, shades, and tones of the same hue. Monochromatic color schemes are very simple and cohesive, but they can be very powerful too. So to illustrate this, let's take a look at this Edgar Allan Poe illustration that I did. So when I do a monochromatic color scheme like this, I try to use four colors, but of course you could use more, you could use less. But the main thing I do to begin with, to start out, is I begin by finding my base color. So let me go ahead and turn off all this. And I usually use the disk view to find my base color. So I'll slide the hue ring around here. And then I just try to get close to what I want for my base color. Once I've come kind of close then, I'll open up the classic view. And the key here is I want to have the saturation slider and the brightness slider right on top of each other. So those are totally lined up there. And that's going to be my base color. So let me go ahead then and just pop up the base color here. So now that I've got the base color selected, the next thing I want to do is I want to pick a tint for my lightest color. Tints are going to be achieved by moving the hue closer to white with our saturation slider. So with my base color still selected here, I'm going to come back up here to the color panel with classic view enabled here. And I'm going to slide this to the left closer to that white. So the saturation slider moves to the left, while the brightness slider is going to move up here to the top and to the right. So that's going to work as my tint, that's going to work as my highlights. Now that I've got that shows, I'm going to go ahead and open it up there so you can see those two sitting next to each other. Now that I've got that selected, I want to select a shade for my darkest color next. So shades are made by moving the hue closer to black. So once again here, coming back to my colors panel, I'm going to select my base color. And I'm going to go ahead and move this brightness here down towards black. So moving this to the left. And then I'm going to move my saturation all the way over here to the right until I decide that looks good. So that's going to be my shade. That's going to be my darkest color. So I'll go ahead and open this up so we can see we've got three of the four colors selected. And finally here what I want to do is I want to go ahead and choose a shadow or accent color. So once again, I want to choose my main color here, my base color. Come back up here to the classic view. And then I want to go ahead and increase the saturation while dropping the brightness until I get something that I'm happy with. And that's going to be the color for our shadows and accents. So opening that up, you can see what we're left with. So now that I've got all my colors selected, we can really see how these tie into each other. And it's going to explain even more how I just selected those colors. So, let me go ahead and select my brightest color here. I'm going to come up to the classic view again. And as I shuffle through each of these colors, make sure that you pay attention not only to where the color sits up here on the color picker, but watch the saturation and the brightness sliders here. As I move here from left to right, you'll see the color up here drops kind of diagonally and the saturation slider moves to the right the brightness slider moves to the left with each color once again diagonally here saturation to the right brightness to the left until we get to the last color 
which is fully saturated and is further here to the left. So you can see how... All right, guys, if we take a look closely there, okay, it's not using pure black, okay, for the shades itself there, right, okay? So most of us as illustrators, okay, normally, we are not basically using pure black for or to escape or basically to complete or to finalize our design unless you're using a dark outline there okay for example like a comic kind of style there but most of illustrators there right okay if you guys can see most of those combination of colors there which is i actually have been sharing you guys also before okay when i show you guys on our uh, on our previous kind of work on assignments there okay those digital illustrations there we are not basically applying black colors normally for most of our design there, okay? uh, Those are the things for comic styles only there, okay? But even though some comics normally they don't use, I try applying beyond 100% kind of black, okay, for my color combination or color usage there, okay? I'm using something like a very dark kind of brown, dark kind of maroon there basically or dark blue there basically right here or dark purple for some of the outlines there to give more interesting kind of uh, engagements on our illustrations that the color combination we can do are going to be totally different there guys you will see basically the whole presentations are going to be different kind of approach there right? okay they have a very sense of enrichment enrichment enlightenment and also on for your for your for your composition itself like in the whole presentation itself like that. how those kind of stair step down at that angle until we're left with our last color now let's go ahead and take a look at how everything is pieced together on the canvas so let me turn this off and we're left with even though you guys take a look from the screen they look a little bit more like a dark black again come on guys you guys learn basically color combinations before you must be able to train also your eye to see things carefully and look carefully when you choose your color combinations of the this direct. Everything here. So, what I want to do here is let's go ahead and turn. Let's just do everything off. I'm going to start here with my darkest color, my shade. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and move on to the base color, which kind of fills everything in this off to the side so we can see all the pieces here and then from here let's go ahead and add in those highlights so that's going to be our brightest color and then finally we can add in our shadows and our accent colors here and then let's go ahead and add in the rest of the background here so as you can see here with the background the majority of it i went with that tint that lightest color that's our highlights and the reason i did that is because all of the outlines here and the majority of what's going to touch that background is our dark color choosing that tint gives us the absolute most contrast between the background and the foreground and that really makes the whole design pop and then from there, of course, with the frame, just kind of alternating colors there to tie everything in together with that monochromatic color scheme. So you can do this with any hue and any color temperature. This is obviously using a cool color, but the same thing can be done with warm colors too, which gives a totally different rhythm to the design. The next color harmony is complementary. So comp what if you could generate a new income stream just by simply loading up some mini ebooks online onto Amazon? Complimentary is honestly the one I use the most here on my YouTube channel. My main character design is the base color, and then I use a complimentary color for the background. Complementary colors create the most contrast and make each other appear brighter. Now, I didn't talk about this with monochromatic because Procreate doesn't have an assist function for that, but for the rest of these color harmonies, you can actually select the harmony tab in your colors panel up here to have Procreate pick the right colors for each color scheme based on the first color you choose. And that's the key with picking colors for color harmony. Always pick your main dominant color first. Your remaining colors are gonna all be based off that first color you choose. With the color harmony selected down here then, we have all of our different options up here for the color harmonies, starting with complementary. So let's take a look at this devil design, a warm bright red for the character itself. 
that's, that's the color, the color I, started I started out. out. All right, if you take a look there, okay, the color that they use basically for the outlines is basically a dark colors from the red kind of combinations there. All right, it's not purely black, there, guys. Don't don't basically, right? Okay, simply look into those kind of combination of the strokes. They say there, okay. Or uh, you thought basically they're using black colors there. Look carefully the combination between those colors there. It basically not pure black, so it's a little bit more like a dark brown combination with the red itself, okay, for the color strokes for these illustrations there. That what make interesting. And the other things there, okay, that I saw from some of you guys who actually work with AI, or maybe you're going to work with Procreate later on, there, right? The quality of those line works. There's a mixture with multiple various type of quality of line that show basically the depths also from the stroke itself. They give you your design a bit more like uh, illusions of dimensional for your illustrations that instead of using only one simple single kind of strokes kind of quality of line there, okay, for your illustration there. Then mixed up with the multiple kind of what we call the combination of those quality of like thick and thinness basically we can use right here to show basically those dimensional for your design there okay dimensional for your design okay when you actually use the very thickness and the thin for this line there right this forehead kind of line there right they give the dimension of those those elements of those uh, form there right okay which we can see from the whole presentations over here that's what make those designs look interesting there, okay? Not only the whole overall kind of look and feels of those ideas itself there, right? That one, I decided what I wanted my main dominant color to be. So we'll go ahead and select the color there of the devil. And then pulling up our color panel and under harmony here with complementary selected, you can see right across the color wheel is our kind of blue green works is that background with complementary colors you're always going to have one warm and one cool so in this case obviously the devil is the warm color the blue green background is the cool color this whale is another example using a cool color for the main character that's our dominant color so if we go ahead and select that when we come up here to the color panel and once again you're going to see our complementary color right across from our base color there we've got the blue of the whale kind of that peachish color for the background and once again colors are opposite on the color wheel and they're equidistant from the edge of the wheel and then also equidistant from the center of the disc like I said, complementary colors give you a ton of contrast and they're super easy to do. Similar to this is split complementary. So split complementary schemes use a base color and then two secondary colors placed symmetrically on the color wheel. In split complementary, the three selected colors form a narrow triangle. What this does is it gives you one warm color and then two cool colors or vice versa, you're gonna have one cool and two warm colors. Unlike complementary color, split complementary schemes, they're more balanced and they're easier on the eyes. Usually you want the color at the top of the triangle to be the main color. The two secondary colors are going to work as highlights and accent colors. So here we have a cartoon girl and I started off by deciding that her hair was going to be the main dominant color. So chose the yellow for the hair. And Okay guys, I saw some of you guys, okay, some of the girls are right, okay, who draw the uh, ladies cartoon girl characters there, right, okay? I think J E there, okay, J E also done, okay. She actually have been showed me basically a several kind of design, okay. Okay, J E or the rest of you guys, please take a look how they simplified the hairline, strokes, shapes there when we design basically the characters itself. Okay? How basically they simplify the ears, the eyes, etc. Okay, the lips and mouth there, right? Okay, the whole kind of elements there. Okay, to develop those kind of design there, right? Okay, it's very important for you guys to look into all this kind of stylization and simplification on those ideas there when you create your own characters there, right? Okay, even though there's a lot of complex elements from here, but they looks very simple to develop there, right? Okay, and very clear enough with the solid kind of strokes itself that I get to work with it. 
they try to learn and analyze each time that you develop all these ideas together. And now yeah, coming, coming up, up here, here to, to our, our color, color panel, panel with the harmony selected, selected then, we're going to go ahead and move over, over to split, split complementary. And you can see Procreate automatically chooses those secondary colors for us. So we've got the blue here and then also the violet. So use the blue for the background and the eyes and then the violet for the shirt and the hair bands. With this option, we have the warm color as our base. So the warm color of the hair is our base. And that's always, like I said, at the tip of the triangle. And then the two cool colors are our secondary colors, and those are on the opposite ends of that triangle. So if we choose a cool color for our hair like this violet, we now have two warm colors as our complementary colors right here. Our cool color is at the tip of the triangle, and now our warm colors are the secondary colors here. And pulling up the previous one, you can see how just making that change really affects the overall feel of the exact same drawing. The split complementary is the same scheme I used for my logo, and designing this, I knew I wanted the text to consist of two warm colors, so in order for that to happen, I needed to choose a cool color for my main dominant color. Even though this really isn't the dominant color in this design, it was what gave me those two warm colors. So, selecting the blue here then, shows those two warm colors there on the ends of the triangle. Even though the blue is at the top of the triangle, the words still act like the main focal point because of the warm color temperature. So like we talked about before, that warm color temperature brings that to the foreground, the blue kind of fades to the background. Next up, we have analogous. So this scheme uses one base color and two secondary colors, just like split complementary. The base color is usually used as the main shade in the artwork just like split complementary but the main difference here is that the three colors are positioned closer together which makes this color scheme either all warm or all cool based on that initial color that you choose with this color scheme you don't have any contrasting colors or colors competing for attention which gives you a more uniform and clean result so for an example of this, let's take a look at that banana illustration that I did. The banana is the main color, which gives us a yellow for a base. So let's select that. And then coming up here to our color panel, once again, harmony down here. We're going to change this over to analogous. And you'll see the main color here being the yellow banana. And then we have our secondary colors here being the green and that orange, which finishes out the design. You can see how color harmony works so well by comparing this to the what not to do example I showed you at the beginning of the video. Exact same illustration. One works, one looks like absolute trash. Another thing here to keep in mind with the analogous, you can also add extra tints and shades and tones of each of your three main colors to kind of add in a little extra spice if you need more variety. So turning this on and off, you can kind of see here how I changed the leaves here and then the extra line here in the background. So just a little bit more variety playing off that same color scheme. The triad color scheme is next. This also plays off the split complementary color scheme, but instead of a triangle with a sharp point, it puts equal distance between all three colors. The result here is a trio of colors that are equally dominant and it gives you a vibrant and punchy result. To use a triadic scheme successfully, the colors should be carefully balanced. You're gonna wanna let one color dominate and then use the two other colors for accents. To explain this, let's go ahead and take a look at this anchor design. So I use triadic color schemes a lot in designs like this, where I want just a strong graphic punch. It's fun, it's vibrant, and it screams for attention. So as you can see here, blue is my main color. That was my jumping off point. That's my dominant color. So if we select that, we come up here once again to our color panel, harmony selected, and let's switch over to triadic. You can see now we have that equilateral triangle here. 
all the colors equidistant apart from each other. We've got the greens and the pinks, which I used to work as the accent colors here. And then I kind of leveraged out the rest of the design by alternating the colors of all three and the stars here down at the bottom. So once again, I used this design at the beginning of the video to show you how different the same design can look just by making different color choices. So now that you've learned more, compare these two again with the one we have here, the finished good design, and then our absolute trash design. So as you learn more throughout this video, are you starting to understand why this works and why this doesn't and why color choice is so important? I hope so. Kami hanya mengambil duit yuran daripada pelajar hanya RM50 sebulan. Finally, we have Tetradic. Like the triadic scheme, the Tetradic places equal distance between all the colors chosen, but this time with four colors instead of three. The results are going to be vibrant, they're going to be colorful, and can honestly be pretty chaotic at times. These colors can be really aggressive and in your face. This is going to give you no clear dominance of one color over another, especially if you use them all equally. So you're definitely going to want to be pretty careful using this one. So here's a couple of examples of how I incorporate this into my work. I love to Tetradic for doodle compositions like this. Since there's so many individual characters here, I don't want one to overshadow another, but I don't want them to blend together either. So a Tetradic color scheme gives me enough colors to work with in order to make sure the characters are separated from left to right and top to bottom, while also giving each one kind of the equal importance in the design. There's no real dominant color, so I started out with just the pink on this and then pulling up my color panel here again harmony selected and moving this over to tetradic you can see then we have the tetradic rectangle there with all the different colors selected each one represented equally here in the design it just balances each other out and like i said one's not more dominant than the other it just all kind of ties it together now let's go ahead and take a look at another way to use that exact same Tetradic color scheme. With this, same exact colors as the Doodle composition. All the colors are equidistant apart from each other on the color wheel, so no real dominant color, so to speak. But in this case, the yellow does appear to have more dominance in the design just because the size of that main character is so much larger compared to the rest of the background. Okay, guys. Other than basically you guys learn about the color combinations okay, for these sessions over here I want you guys to take a look when they design basically the characters itself though, right? They has a very dynamic, flexibilities, fun kind of looks and emotions, expressions of emotions of each character design right? okay? that, that make basically uh, we as a creators also will develop more fun kind of emotions when we develop the process of working other than we just have a very stiff kind of characters doesn't have any emotions there you guys can see okay uh if I, as i remember like natasha the writing and zahira and also uh some of you guys there when you design the characters itself we can see basically some of the most of the character that you design doesn't have that kind of emotion or feelings there guys there's no dynamic kind of look and feel of those design here right okay so you guys have to check back again those designers okay? even though as i told you guys mentioned you guys okay if you guys have completed it, it's okay but if you want to apply more ideas on your sketches there first that's basically one of the great process that you guys can actually uh, revamp and redevelop back again to develop your creativities for those exercises okay before we to move on into more and more kind of what we call that uh kind of what we call that focus on the assignments later on here, right? okay? yeah, but this is exercise basically is really great for us to to engage basically and to stimulate basically our ideas there back again there guys okay most of those design that you saw there okay even though when i design basically my character okay they also have that kind of emotion itself there right to give more impression expressions and a very good kind of feelings when you design them we still get a super fun and punchy color scheme without it being too busy or too distracting. 
So that's color theory in a nutshell, but here's one thing to remember. There's no one correct answer, one correct way to color your artwork. You can have a handful of approaches that work for any given design, but there's always going to be thousands of wrong choices. Learning color theory and being able to use that knowledge to identify what works and what doesn't work is the key to making the right decisions for your illustrations. So what did you think? Did you learn something new? Did you get some valuable information that you can apply to your own artwork? If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. All right, guys. So that's basically the guys, okay? Some of the videos. Okay, the videos. Okay, I already shared two different videos there basically in our Google Classrooms. You guys can check it out later on there, okay? For your reference. And I'm going to update also with you guys with our sessions over here which is I'm going to put into my YouTube there okay, uh, for the record itself there okay, and hopefully you guys can actually some of you guys who did not basically uh, what we call it entering there okay, the sessions uh, I believe there okay, one or two of you guys were not here uh, but Alice were here there right Alice? Alison? Yes sir Okay great thank you very much for joining okay, and the rest of you guys over here and I think uh, no, Yen is not here, right? Okay. Who actually, right? Okay, the grandmother, right? Her grandmother will pass away there, okay, this week. So, hopefully, he, she can basically, right? Okay, review back again our sessions there at the same time there, okay, later on. All right, guys. So, any questions? Any kind of inquiries? On the color theories itself? Yes or no? Do you, you have a clear idea right now, like how it works? Okay, Shuki, thank you very much there right again for the response. Okay, guys, okay, thank you very much for this session over here. All right, and thank you also, okay, for understand our situations at, it, at this time, okay, but still, I hopefully this kind of session will give a bit more better kind of clear kind of record a response on your questions or your kind of inquiries, your kind of uh, dilemmas basically okay when it comes to develop your designs later on especially when I saw basically you design the, the, the logos itself there, okay for other subjects there, right other tasks there, okay hopefully can give more better kind of understanding from here to develop your kind of skills there right so other than that keep on actually practice your sketch there, okay in the right way and the rest of you guys who actually is still struggling enough to develop those ideas keep on working with your sketches there guys okay just playing around with your ideas there okay, that's basically one of the things that i can give to prepare basically your kind of skills at the same time for your future kind of uh, design works all right thank you very much have a good day there guys okay take care yourself i'll see you guys around next week and thank you very much for buying the right okay uh Liu Xin Yi, okay? I just take those attendance there. Welcome there guys, okay? Take care there, right? Excuse me, sir. Yes? Can you please check a few of our attendants? Okay. Your name My name is, is T. Kuo Kim. T. Kuo Kim, right? Okay, great. Yes. And, and can, can you please check, check also Charlene? Charlene. Shalin. Okay, Shalin, see you there, right? Hi, sir. Okay. I'm Shalin. How's it going? Okay. And, and one, one more is Liu Yu Yen. Yes, sir. Liu Yu Yen. Uh, I think I have been off. Okay. They already took those attendance there, right? Check back again on your system. Is it a few on the system there? Keep it there, right? Okay, guys, thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Have a good weekend at the same time. Thank okay, you, sir. Our, what we call the submission for the Sunday, there, right? Okay, bye bye. Take care, there, right? Uh, sir, just now I already. Uh, I, I have attended the class, but I, when I check my attendance, it's absent. Young, young Shilian, is it? Young uh? Shilian. Young Chen, right? Yi Young Chen, right? On BC, yes. Okay. Who is it? Yi Young Chen, right? You can make a video of your attendance. Number 73, right? 
The last one is this. Xiang Yi, right? Can you use Xiang Yi, right? Right. Wang Zilian, Wang Zilian, right? Okay. Yes. Wang Zilian. Okay. Anyone else? Attendance. See you in the air. No, thank you, sir. All right, thank you guys. Okay, bye bye.